Hello, everyone. Thank you all for attending our webinar session today titled Things to Know for Your First FBA Shipment. My name is John Gorosky, and I'm part of the Learning and Development Team at Seller University. Today, we are joined by Nick and Chris. They will be facilitating and moderating today's webinar session. Before I hand it over to them so they can introduce themselves, I'd like to cover a couple of uh, housekeeping notes. Uh, before we begin, first, you will notice that your individual microphones are muted. To really extract the benefits from today's session, please silence all devices that may come as a distraction. We want to make sure that you do not miss anything pertinent or important. Second, make sure to utilize the, uh, uh, the chat channel to ask your questions. First, we'll be monitoring the chat window and we'll be engaging with you throughout the session. So make sure to take advantage of interacting with the live Amazonia. And then finally, at the end of today's session, you will receive a brief survey asking you about your experience on today's webinar. This will be your opportunity to provide us with your feedback and share any topics you wish for us to cover in the future. So without further delay, Nick and Chris, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thanks, John. And yeah, so my name is Nick. I am on the uh, SSR team here helping new sellers get started with Amazon and just their selling journey on Amazon in general. So today I'm going to be walking you guys through, uh, you know, the things to know for your first FBA shipment. So welcome to the training. So today our topics are going to include FBA benefits, how to register for FBA, adding and converting listings to FBA, the FBA new selection program, sending your FBA, sending in your first FBA shipment, and FBA restocks, returns, removals, and disposals. At the end of our training, we're gonna have a quick Q&A period for additional questions. And before we get started, I just wanted to note that this webinar is gonna be recorded and will be shared in Seller University at a later date. So let's jump into it. Whether you are a new or existing seller on Amazon, you may be wondering why fulfillment by Amazon or FBA is a good choice for your business. So let's dive into some FBA benefits here. FBA gives you more time to focus on growing your business. With FBA, Amazon stores your inventory, ships your orders, and handles returns and customer service for your FBA orders. By sending your products to FBA, you benefit from your offers being Prime eligible, which gives you the Prime badge, and free one or two day delivery options. The FBA fee structure also scales with your business needs, meaning you only pay for the service you use. So FBA helps build trust with the customers. Customers know and trust Amazon's world-class shipping, packaging, and customer service, which means peace of mind for you and your customers alike. Finally, Amazon offers programs like FBA Subscribe and Save, FBA Small and Light, Multi-Channel Fulfillment, and FBA Export to help you expand your business. Now that we've covered some of my favorite FBA benefits, let's walk through how to register for FBA. So to register your products for FBA, sign into your Seller Central account, and then you're gonna hover over the Settings tab and select Account Info. From here, locate your services and click Manage. Under You Can Sign Up For, select Fulfillment by Amazon. To finish, click Register. All right, so now that you've registered for FBA, it's time to convert your listings. If you have not yet listed the products you wish to send to FBA, visit Manage Inventory page and select Add a Product. Here you have two ways to add products to your inventory. The first option is adding a product one by one. So to do this, search your product in Amazon's catalog using the product name or product ID, which is gonna be like the barcode. If, you, if your product does not already exist in Amazon's catalog, you will create a listing by selecting, I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon. Oh, sorry. Jumping all over the place here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry about this. 
There we go. To do this for your product, uh, search for the product ID. And when you're adding a product not sold on Amazon, all you need to do is when adding a product one by one, select Amazon will ship and provide customer service as your fulfillment channel under the product's offer information. The second way to add inventory to FBA is to list your, your products in bulk using an inventory file. So if uploading products using an inventory file, be sure the file contains the following. Under the fulfillment center ID column, or center ID, column type Amazon underscore NA, and leave the quantity column field blank. To learn more about this capability, search for bulk listing in Seller University. You will update the quantity when you create your shipping plan. If you have existing listings to convert to FBA, visit Manage Inventory page and select SKUs you wish to convert. Click the action dropdown at the top of the page and select Change to Fulfilled by Amazon. As a pro tip here, if you plan to fulfill orders yourself, as well as offer products through FBA, you must create two listings, one for each fulfillment type. So now that we've covered that, let's now that we have your listings added or converted to FBA, it's time to enroll in the FBA new selection program. So it's important to enroll in this program prior to creating and sending your first FBA shipment. Doing this will allow you to take advantage of all the program's benefits. Some of the FBA new selection program benefits include free monthly storage and free removal removals for both standard and oversized ASINs for a limited time, and additional benefits for apparel and shoes. A $200 credit in sponsored ad promotional clicks for new FBA sellers and $100 discount on Amazon preferred carrier shipping for new FBA sellers. So to enroll in the FBA new selection program, search for FBA new selection in Seller Central. You can also learn more about the program by searching FBA new selection program in Seller University. So after you enroll in the FBA new selection program, it's time to create your first FBA shipment. Let's walk through each step of creating your first FBA shipment using the send to Amazon workflow. Step one, you're gonna choose inventory to send. Step one B, pack individual units. Step two, confirm shipping. Step three, print box labels. Step four, confirm carrier and pallet information. And step five, you're gonna print the pallet labels. So let's get started with step one here. Choose inventory to send. To start your shipment, hover over inventory and select manage FBA shipments. From here, click send to Amazon at the top of the shipping queue page. On this page, you'll see a list of products you've added or converted to FBA. You'll be prompted to enter in the address you're shipping your products from and select the store destination. Be sure to enter an accurate ship from address and select the correct store destination as this will determine which fulfillment center you will send your FBA shipment to. It's also important to note here that the ship from address and shipping destination cannot be changed once we proceed to the next step in the workflow. So after this, locate the SKUs you wish to send to Amazon and determine your packing details. Here you will see two options on the dropdown. Create a new case pack template and individual units. Select create a new case pack template if you're shipping single SKU boxes or case packs that contain one or more units of the same SKU. Case pack templates allows you to save information about how your SKUs are packed, prepped, and labeled. Once you create a case pack template, you can reuse it for the future shipments and save time when replenishing your FBA inventory. Then select individual units if you're shipping mixed SKU boxes or if you plan to send single SKU boxes, but your packing details will vary from shipment to shipment. So if you're creating a case pack template, 
start by entering the packing template name. You can create up to three case pack templates per SKU, so be sure to select a template name you can tell apart from the others that you may create in the future. After entering your template name, enter in the amount of units per box. This is the number of sellable units in each shipping box. Then enter your box dimensions and box weight. Depending on your SKUs, your units may require prep and labeling to be received correctly at our fulfillment centers. Any required prep and labeling must be applied to each sellable unit prior to sending your shipment to the fulfillment center. Under prep for each unit, you'll select your prep category. Select a prep category that's applicable to your SKUs to be alert to be alerted of prep and label requirements for your units. And depending on the prep type, you will also be notified if you're required to prep and label your units before they arrive at the fulfillment center or if your products are eligible for Amazon prep and label services. Now, if you plan on prepping and labeling your units before they arrive at the fulfillment center, select buy seller for who preps and labels units. And if you would like to opt into Amazon's FBA prep and label services and your units are eligible, select buy Amazon on the drop down to opt in for the FBA prep service and FBA label service. Now, once this information is entered, click save. After the, your template is saved, you'll print and apply your SKU labels if you selected seller as the labeling owner. You'll then enter the number of boxes for the SKU you wish to send. Once complete, click ready to send. You're now ready to move on to step two in the workflow. Almost there. For more information on creating case pack template, templates, visit our training in Seller University and search send to Amazon dash create case pack templates. If you're packing individual units, select individual units from the packing details dropdown. You'll then notice a message under information needed stating prep and labeling details needed. Click this message to enter your packing details. Here you will select prep category if applicable to your units. Depending on the prep type, you will be notified if you're required to prep and label your units before they arrive at the fulfillment center or if your products are eligible for our Amazon prep and label services. If you plan on prepping and labeling your units when before they arrive at our fulfillment center, select buy seller again for who preps and labels units. If you would like to opt into Amazon's FBA prep and label services and your units are eligible, select buy Amazon to opt in for the, for the FBA prep and label services. Once complete, click save. Now you will enter the number of units for each SKU you wish to send. Once this is entered, click ready to pack. If packing individual units, you'll notice an additional step in the workflow. Step 1B, pack individual units. If you packed your products using a case pack template, you will not be directed to step 1B. So in step 1B, we will determine which of your SKUs can be packed together and group them into pack groups. Some factors that determine which SKUs can be packed together include SKU weight and dimensions, prep and labeling requirements, and whether the SKUs are dangerous goods or hazmats and will require special, ha special handling at our fulfillment centers. <clears throat> So once your pack groups are determined, you're gonna specify if your pack groups will be packed into one box or multiple boxes. If all SKUs in the pack group will fit into one box, then select everything will fit into one box and enter your box weight and dimensions. Once complete, click confirm packing information. If the SKUs in your pack group require more than one box, select multiple boxes will be needed. Now you have the option of providing box content information by selecting upload Excel file, upload Excel file from the dropdown. 
And you will also have Amazon manually process the contents of your box for a fee. So to do this, select multiple boxes will be needed and select Amazon manually processes box content from the dropdown. To avoid additional fees, you'll want to upload your box content via Excel file. To do this, enter the estimated number of boxes, number of boxes the SKUs in the pack group will fit into. This number will be used to gener generate a pack list spreadsheet. You will download the pack list template and provide your box content information. For each box, enter the number of units per SKU and the box weight and dimensions. Now finish by clicking upload and validate file. So I got a pro tip here for you guys. If packing multiple boxes, be sure to mark your boxes as pack group one, box one, and pack group one, box two, and so on to ensure you apply the right FBA box label IDs, which we're gonna cover shortly in step three. Once you confirm your box content information for each pack group, click confirm and continue to proceed to step two in the send to Amazon workflow, confirm shipping. For more information on packing individual units, visit our training in Seller University by searching for send to Amazon step 1B pack individual units. All righty, so now it is time to move on to step two in the send to Amazon workflow. Confirm shipping. To, to start here, enter your ship date. Your ship date is the date you expect to hand your inventory off to the carrier. By providing an accurate ship date, you'll help the fulfillment center prepare to receive your inventory, so be as accurate as possible. After entering your ship date, you will select your shipping mode. Your shipping mode is how your inventory will be transported to the fulfillment center. Select small parcel delivery or SPD for items packed in shipping boxes that are individually labeled for delivery. If you're shipping boxes on pallets, you're gonna select less than truckload or LTL. If you're selecting, if you are selecting small parcel delivery or SPD, you will be prompted to select a shipping carrier. So you can take advantage of discounted shipping rates and automated tracking by selecting Amazon Partnered Carrier. This will also allow you to buy and print shipping labels in this workflow. If you select a non-Amazon Partnered Carrier, select the carrier's name from the dropdown. And if the carrier's name doesn't appear there, just select Other. Once you select your shipping carrier, you will review your estimated prep, labeling, placement, and shipping fees. So once you review this, select accept charges and confirm shipping. To move on to the next step in the workflow. If you're shipping pallets using less than truckload or LTL as your shipping mode, you'll see your estimated pallet configurations. So these configurations are based on the box content information you provided in step one of the workflow and will help you estimate the cost of shipping your products using LTL or less than truckload. If shipping your products using LTL, you'll confirm your carrier and pallet information in step four of the workflow. Next, review shipments and any applicable estimated prep and labeling charges. And then after reviewing that, you're just gonna click accept and confirm shipping. So once you've confirmed your shipping, you're ready to move on to step three, print box labels. If you're shipping your products using small parcel delivery or SPD, this is the last step in the workflow. If you are shipping pallets using LTL, we're almost done, don't worry. If using Amazon Partnered Carrier, click Print Box Labels to generate a PDF with FBA box ID labels and carrier labels. Be sure to apply the right FBA box ID and carrier label to each box. Once this is complete, you are ready to hand your shipments off to the carrier. If you are using a non-partner carrier, click print box labels to generate a PDF with only FBA box ID labels. You will then need to work with your carrier to create carrier labels for your boxes. 
apply the correct FBA ID label and carrier label to each box and hand off the boxes to your carrier. After handing them off, be sure to mark all as shipped to tell us that your inventory is on its way. And after shipping your inventory, be sure to visit tracking events tab in the shipment summary page to enter your tracking IDs. Very important step there. Click track shipment for each shipment in the workflow and provide tracking IDs for your boxes. So be sure to provide correct tracking IDs for, from your carriers for all shipments. This helps Amazon re receive and receive your shipment faster and helps makes your product available sooner. And if you're shipping your pallets using LTL, click print box labels to generate a PDF with box ID labels. Apply the right FBA box ID label to each box and select continue to carrier and pallet information to pre proceed to step four in the workflow. Now, if you're shipping pallets using LTL, the next two steps only apply to you. And if you're shipping your products using SPD, congratulations, you have just learned how to send in your first shipment to FBA. Be sure to stick around though. I will be covering FBA restocks, returns, removals, and disposals at the end, and we have a Q&A. So in step four of the Send to Amazon workflow, you will confirm your carrier pallet and carry and pallet information. To begin, select the carrier you are using to ship your pallets to Amazon. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can take advantage of discounted shipping rates and automated tracking by selecting an Amazon partnered carrier. Selecting this will also will allow you to buy and print shipping labels in this workflow. If using an Amazon partner carrier, you will enter your freight ready date and pick up contact details for all shipments in your workflow. Providing an accurate freight ready date helps the fulfillment center prepare for your shipment and can avoid unnecessary delays in this process. You will then enter the contact information for someone at your shipment pickup location who can coordinate with the carrier. To do this, just click add a contact. After providing contact information, you will review your pallet estimates for each shipment. Your pallet con configurations will be estimated based on the information you shared in step one in the workflow. Now, if necessary, you can edit your pallet configurations to ensure your shipping cost estimates are accurate. Once you review your pallet configurations and confirm that they are accurate, just click confirm for each shipment to display the shipping cost estimates. After reviewing, click confirm carrier and pallet information to proceed to the final step in the workflow. If you're shipping LTL using a non-partnered carrier, select non-partnered carrier. Confirm the number of pallets in each shipment and click print pallet labels to get four copies of FBA pallet ID labels for each pallet in your shipment. Now, these FBA pallet ID labels include information the Fulfillment Center uses to verify the arrival and contents of your shipment. You will place the FBA pallet ID labels on each side of your pallets. So be sure to place the, the, these labels in the center and near the top of your pallets to ensure visibility. You will select the carrier you're using to send your pallets to Amazon. If you aren't sure which carrier you're using or plan to use multiple carriers, just select other from the carrier dropdown. You will then work with the carrier to schedule a pickup and hand off your inventory. Now, after this is done, mark your inventory as shipped so we know the pallets are on the way. Your carrier will issue a document to you after handing off your shipments. This document is called a bill of landing or BOL. Once you receive your BOL, click track shipment for each shipment in your workflow and provide each shipment's BOL numbers in the tracking events tab on the shipment summary page. If you're using an Amazon partner carrier to ship your pallets, you will print the pallet labels in this step of the workflow. 
So to print the palette labels, you will select the palette label type under print palette labels and documentation and click print. Four copies of palette labels will be printed for each side of, for each of your palette in the shipment. Place one copy of the label on each of the four sides of the palette. Now be sure again to place these labels in the center and near the top of the palettes to ensure that they are visible. And it's important your palette labels are applied correctly as it includes information the Fulfillment Center uses to verify the arrival and contents of your shipment. You will also print your bill of lading or BOL here. Your BOL will be generated no later than 8 a.m. local time the morning of your pallet pickup. You'll need to provide a valid BOL for each pallet in for each pallet shipment to the carrier. BOLs are required for the carrier to schedule a delivery appointment to drop off your shipments at the fulfillment center. And during your pallet pickup, be sure to provide the carrier with your BOL for each shipment along with the Amazon reference ID for each shipment. After your shipment has been picked up by the carrier, mark your shipments as shipped to notify the fulfillment center that they are on the way. You can track each of your shipments by selecting track shipment links at the bottom of the page. So we have just covered the basic steps in the send to Amazon workflow. To learn more about the steps in this workflow, search for FBA Send to Amazon Workflow in Seller University. Once your FBA shipment has been sent, you can track it in Seller Central. And to do this, hover over Inventory and then select Manage FBA Shipments. Here you can see when your shipment is delivered as well as track the progress of your inventory in the fulfillment centers. All right, so now that you know how to send your, in, your shipments to FBA, let's cover what you need to know afterwards, starting with replenishing your inventory. It's important that you stay on top of restocking your FBA inventory to avoid products going out of stock. Now, when your FBA inventory goes out of stock, it will appear as unavailable for purchase to the customers, which is obviously not good. So to stay on top of this, your FBA levels, it's, it's recommended to set up replenishment alerts. Replenishment alerts make it easy for you to manage your inventory in Amazon's fulfillment centers without having, having to monitor each listing. These alerts can be especially helpful as your catalog grows. To set up these alerts, hover over inventory and select manage FBA inventory to view a full list of your FBA products. Select the ASINs you would like to set replenishment alerts for. Once you've selected these ASINs, click the action dropdown and select set replenishment alerts. You'll then verify the ASINs you've selected for replenishment alerts. Click yes, continue to proceed. On the set inventory replenishment alerts page, you can set, edit, and delete replenishment alerts. Once you set a replenishment alert, Amazon will notify you within 24 hours when the ASIN reaches the alert quantity. And when you select an alert quantity for a given item, it's suggested you select a quantity based on your sales and the time it takes to replenish the stock for that item. So for example here, if it takes you two weeks to order and ship a product and you sell about 100 units of that product in a week, it would be advisable to set the alert quantity to somewhere at least around 300 units. When your inventory for that product reaches 300 units in our fulfillment centers, you'll be notified via email. This then gives you three weeks to place an order with your vendors and send in a shipment to the fulfillment center before your inventory is depleted. You can also identify listings with replenishment alerts from the inventory Amazon fulfills page. On this page, you will notice a gold bell next to your listing quantity after you set up a replenishment alert. If your inventory has reached the replenish, replenishment alert quantity, the gold bell will turn red. 
And once you're notified it's time to replenish your inventory, hover over inventory, then select manage FBA inventory. Select the ASINs you would like to replenish and click the action drop down menu followed by send replenish inventory. You will then be directed to the send to Amazon page. Here you'll repeat the same steps we covered in the send to Amazon workflow for your first shipment. If you created a case pack template, Here's where you can reuse this template if you're shipping single SKU boxes and your boxes will be packed, prepped, and labeled the same way as your last shipment. All right, so now that you know how to replenish your FBA inventory and set up replenishment alerts, let's cover the FBA returns. As I mentioned earlier, one of the best benefits of FBA is Amazon handling customer service and returns for your, for your FBA orders. So what happens if Amazon ships your product to a customer and you get a return? Amazon will use its customer return policies to determine if a purchased FBA item is eligible for return. So to ensure a great customer experience here, returns may be accepted accepted when or accepted from customers beyond the time frame stated in these policies in most cases customers can request a return on an item within 30 days of receiving it when a customer returns an item back to the fulfillment center the condition of each returned item is evaluated it's also it will be we we will determine if the item is sellable or unsellable if the item is sellable, it will return back into your inventory. A returned item will be classified as unsellable if the item is not in the same condition as previously listed. This means the product is defective, damaged, open, lacking required labeling, prohibited, or the item possesses health or safety risk to associates or the next customer who buys it. Examples of these items may include, but are not restricted to, consumables, personal care products, and products with expiration dates. So Amazon assesses who caused the damage on all unsellable items. After this assessment is complete, it will be determined if you're eligible for a reimbursement. It's recommended you stay up to date on all your FBA returns, and you can do so by utilizing reports available to you in Seller Central. To access your FBA returns report, hover over the reports tab in, and select fulfillment. Under customer concessions, select FBA customer returns. You can use the FBA customer returns report to learn how many units have been returned and credited to your inventory balance in a given time period. This report will also allow you to view the condition of the returned item, a short description of the reason of the reason for the return and if it is sellable or not. And for more information on FBA returns, just search FBA customer returns policy in Seller Central. So if you have unsellable inventory or you would like to remove your inventory from Amazon fulfillment centers for another reason, you'll need to create a removal order. There are three options for removal of your inventory. So return to address, liquidations, and disposal. Disposing of items including includes donation, recycling, and landfill. For more information on FBA removals, search for removal of your FBA inventory in Seller University. All right, so you guys made it. That concludes our training today. And here's a brief overview of everything we covered. FBA benefits, how to register for FBA, how to add and convert listings to FBA, the FBA new selection program, sending your first FBA shipment using the send to Amazon workflow, and FBA restocks, returns, removals, and disposals. So now that we completed our agenda, let's get into some Q&A. So here we can open up the floor for questions and my colleague Chris is going to help me with this. Yep. Hey guys, it's Chris. Um, so Nick, we do have quite a few questions coming in. Um, I think one of the key ones would be um, 
you know, can you give us a little bit more insight on the FBA label slash prep service? Yeah, definitely. So uh, if you're planning on using the FBA label and uh, or prep and label services, your item is going to have a valid barcode on it just to get into and scanned into our fulfillment centers, just so we know what that product is. And then from there, you can choose if you just want it prepped or labeled. Prepping includes bagging and all sorts of packaging types. Um, and then labeling, we can just put on an FN SKU on it and uh, different sorts of labeling. And prices for that vary based on category. So for the prep side of it, it's I think anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar per unit. And then uh, on the on the labeling side, it's going to be around 30 cents to 50 cents per unit. Got it. Thank you. That's perfect. And then um, a couple questions from uh, individuals wondering if they can just bring their shipment over to the closest FC. So we get that question a lot. Unfortunately, we cannot have sellers themselves bringing them to a fulfillment center. We know that it may be convenient for the seller. They might be very close to a fulfillment center. Um, but we are not allowing sellers to drop off inventory at the fulfillment center. You're going to have to go through the send to Amazon workflow and it will generate a fulfillment center that you need to ship your items to. Got it. And then um, I see a couple of people wondering if they are able to print the chat or if they will be able to see this information after. We are going to have this information saved in a seller university video. So uh, this recording should be available there. So hopefully that will help. Um, another question I have for you is, um, what's the difference between an ASIN and an FN SKU? So the FN SKU is the Amazon specific barcode or identifier. Um, I, I guess it's the Amazon specific barcode number. And that can be placed on an item in lieu of having you know a upc code if necessary and then you would also have to apply for a upc exemption and asin is just a product identifier that amazon uses for every product in its catalog to ensure that we know exactly what that product is so whenever you create a listing if it's a brand new listing your item will automatically get assigned a random asin number so it can be tracked through amazon's system and then the uh, the FN SKU is more used at our fulfillment centers um, for you know processing and storage, so we know where that item is. Got it. Great. Um, and then I think we have another question about. Uh, let's see. So it looks like. Um, sorry, I just lost it. Um, how can you get an estimate of the prices uh, so far in this process? Uh, I think that would just be the FBA revenue calculator, correct? Yeah, correct. Uh, we have an FBA revenue calculator and that's on Seller Central as well. So you can just search for that. Um, and if you search for fees in Seller Central, it'll bring up all the different applicable fees for FBA and just selling on general and uh, selling on Amazon in general. Got it. And then let's see, got some more coming in. Um, Let's see, is there, okay, let's see. Are there any restrictions during Q4 by Amazon on FBA for new sellers or in delay processing uh, inventory to get live? So basically I think what they're asking is, um, you know, are there any restrictions during Q4 or specific restrictions that you're aware of? Um, I mean, as far as restrictions go, I don't think so. Other than toys, is that still? Yeah, I think that's correct. Yeah, toys are still being restricted. So if you haven't uh, applied to sell toys, um, you're at this point likely going to be restricted just so we have inventory and you know the appropriate sellers to get ready for the holidays. Uh, as far as delays go, um, there are just general shipping delays not even involved with Amazon as far as you know, Black Friday and the holidays go. So it's best to always get your inventory in as soon as possible to get ready for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and then moving into the holidays. Yep, great. And then I uh, see a couple questions about how to understand you know, what you need to do in terms of prep 
Um, could you just touch up on that and how sellers can understand whether they need to bubble wrap it or if they need to label it or anything of that sort? Yeah, so every item that you're sending into Amazon is going to have to have a barcode on it. Um, and that could be a UPC, an ISBN. It, there's tons of different barcodes that we accept or an FN SKU that you can print off for free and label your products with. And that helps us you know, just determine what the product is once it gets into our fulfillment centers. And then as far as packaging goes, uh, if it is a breakable item, it's going to have to withstand a drop test, which I think right now is three feet or six feet. Um, or I think it's three feet, six sided drop test. So just make sure if it is a breakable item that it is, uh, you know, fully bubble wrapped because you don't want your end customer to get a broken product and leave a bad review there. And then if it is a liquid, you're gonna need to make sure that it is poly bag, poly wrapped, or uh, has a double seal in it, um, which would be, you know, like those little seals inside the cap of an item and then a seal on top of that as well. And yeah, other than that, um, adult products need to be packaged in um, black or opaque uh, bags, just so they are not see-through. And yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Chris, I don't know if you can send in the labeling requirements into the chat yeah, um, fr from Seller that, Central. Okay. There's a there's a pretty good page on Seller Central that kind of walks walks you through everything you would need it for your specific category. Got it. Yep. I will send that out right now. Here, I've got an inventory labeling requirements at Seller University video that I will send to the chat for everybody. Um, and then let's see here. Um, so <clears throat> if, uh, if we have a seller that's, you know, uh, got an overseas shipment, uh, generally, uh, if they need to get that sent over there, their, uh, manufacturer would need to put the labels on their product, correct? Correct. So you would go through the send to Amazon workflow. And then from there, you would give the shipping labels to your manufacturer or your vendor overseas. And then they would likely have to work with a freight forwarding service to get the uh, the inventory through customs and then to the fulfillment center. Got it. And then we're having a couple questions come in about just the you know general time that it's going to take for a listing to go live. Uh, do you have any you know ballpark answers as to what that would look like? Yeah, so when you ship your items into FBA, uh, the listing doesn't go active until it is available. It, it shows as available in your inventory. And um, actually a majority of the time too, if it shows as reserved, that means that it is just being transferred to a different fulfillment center and it will be available at a pushed out delivery date. So it won't be available you know, in the one to two day free shipping yet but it'll still be available for sale. And generally speaking, from handing off to your carrier to being processed in the fulfillment center and being available uh, for sale, um, it's two to four weeks, and that's a general estimate. And then during this time and you know the holidays and getting ready for Black Friday, uh, those times uh, can be delayed a little bit. So just keep that in mind when you're sending in inventory to FBA. Perfect. And then people are asking more about the uh, the FBA new selection program. So could you just go a little bit further into that? Yeah. So I like to say that it's more of a promotion than a program because it was really intended to just help sellers who are new to Amazon get started with FBA. And it's free to sign up for. Um, what it does is it gets you enrolled in this program where it tracks the ASINs that you're sending into uh, FBA. And as long as you enroll in it, before you've created your first FBA shipment and sent it in, then you'll get, like I said earlier in the in the presentation, you'll get all the benefits of it. So you'll get, you know, access to the $200 in sponsored ads clicks. Um, you will get $100 in, you know, reimbursement for shipping using partnered carriers, and it really just it's. After that, it'll just track in items that you send that are new to FBA and uh, let you kind of get more credits and more benefits for those. Got it. Perfect. And then I think another good question would be um, when sellers are uh, shipping it in, 
what would be some uh, you know best practices for just ensuring that they've done everything correctly? What would your recommendation be? So uh, like I said earlier, um, if you're doing multiple boxes, just do you know pack list box one or pack list one box one pack list one box two and just make sure that you're double checking everything because the last thing that you want to do is have your inventory sent in and you know your carrier is still going to pick it up but if it's not labeled and everything's not correct there can be a lot of delays once it gets to our fulfillment center because they have to figure out how to process it because you may have done something wrong so just make sure that you're double checking everything uh, at the end of the day, this is, you know, your business and you want it to run well. So, you know, might as well put in the time on the front end to make sure everything goes smoothly. Yep. And then how I, I see a couple more questions about uh, the FBA new selection program. How can sellers uh, check if they got the benefits again? So uh, there's a dashboard in Seller Central. Uh, if you just search FBA new selection, it should pop up. And if you click on that, it'll sh it'll track all the benefits in there that you've been using or that you have you know had applied to your account. Um, and sometimes you know you'll you'll sign up for FBA New Selection and almost forget about it, and the next thing you know, you're just getting credits back to your account. Got it. Perfect. And then, um, do you have to be a professional level seller to qualify for the FBA New Selection program? That is yeah, that is correct. Uh, you have to be a professional seller. Uh, generally, media. Uh, so if you're uh, reselling books, you the media uh, category doesn't generally qualify for that. So just something to keep in mind. Um, and then let's go keep going through these. Um, let's see. Just trying to make sure we're answering questions that haven't been. Okay. Um, let's see. Which label would you recommend, uh, FN SKU or a UPC? What is there any difference? Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with either of them. I generally recommend UPC codes just because it's widely accepted for any sort of business other than Amazon as well. Um, yep. Amazon and FN SKU is only for Amazon, so yeah, I would always usually recommend an a UPC code. Got it. And then can you go into further detail about how you change a product from F FBM or merchant fulfillment over to FBA? Yeah. So if you're already, if you already have a listing that is uh, FBM or merchant fulfilled, um, there's a little drop down menu on that listing. So you just go to manage inventory and then over to the right side, there's a drop down and you just click on that and just click change to fulfilled by Amazon. And then it just walks you through a pretty simple workflow, um, pretty much the send to Amazon workflow. And then, yeah, you would just send it in like we went over. Got it. Let's see. Um, so, um, so the question about uh, can you use the manufacturer's barcode? Um, so do you, are you el eligible to use the manufacturer's barcode or does it generally need to be a unique barcode specific to that product? So it depends. I mean, it depends what barcode the manufacturer is putting on. If they're putting a UPC code on it, then yes, you're more than you know able to use that. Um, there are some very random types of barcodes, you know, from other regions of the world that do not work. Um, but generally speaking, a manufacturer should know, especially if they know that you're sending it to Amazon, what Amazon will accept and what they won't accept. Uh, the questions to ask are, you know, what is the barcode? So try to get the exact name of it. And um, if it's a UPC code, go ahead with it. Sometimes, you know, you can just give the manufacturer the FN SKU if you want, and they can apply that as well. Yep. And then another one I see that is, um, would the seller be responsible for storage fees due to return? So once that product gets sent back from the customer to the FC, is it up to the seller to remove? And are they eligible for uh, any storage fees they have to those products? 
Yeah, so if that uh, return goes back into your inventory, then yes, you know, you would still be or you would still be held accountable for uh, any storage fees applied to that ASIN. Um, and then other than that, you can always just create a removal order if it is unsellable or just get a reimbursement for it. Got it. And I'm not sure if you would know this one, but I do see uh, there's an individual by the name of Virginia who's asking if you can, uh, how you change your Amazon product from uh, print on demand to FBA. Is Do you happen to know that specific answer? Um, I don't, I don't know if she's talking about like, if it's like shirts, like print on demand shirts, um, because if that's what she is referencing, then you couldn't really do that with books, I think yeah. is what she oh, was saying. Books. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have the best answer on that, but we can always get back to you. Yep. I, I would say for a lot of the questions, uh, if we don't answer, there are going to be future sessions and uh, we don't have all the answers. So I would definitely encourage you to come to those sessions for additional uh, insight, uh, especially if it's outside of the FBA realm. Um, but yeah, I think we have a couple more. So uh, let's see. Can you opt in to have the item not returned to Amazon when the customer wants to return it? And can they still get a refund? Yes. So uh, you would just go into your return settings and adjust those to pretty much what you just said. So you can have it uh, so they just keep them and then also offer the refund as well. Got it. And then can you go a little bit further into what a seller's best practice would be if they have a missing shipment or let's say it gets fully checked in? Is there a specific process that we go into? Yeah, so you're going to want to track this shipment and just make sure that it landed at the fulfillment center and uh, see, you know, how many units are uh, there and just make sure everything checks out with the amount that you sent in. And then uh, if it comes down to it and, you know, Amazon hasn't processed and checked in your inventory after I think it's four to six weeks, you can then try to reconcile which would it pretty much just puts a bigger investigation into where your items went and what happened to them and a lot of this a lot of times this just happens because the seller may have uh, labeled incorrectly or something mm -hmm. happened with the shipment where the labeling just wasn't right and amazon didn't know what to do with that inventory uh, so like i said always make sure that you're labeling your products correctly but at the end of the day, you can always reconcile and then that puts an investigation into your items. And uh, from there, you know, hopefully your items are found and then would just be made available. Got it. And then I uh, got a question for you about uh, Hazmat. Do you, can you just give a general overview of how sellers can, uh, uh, you know, try to get the approval for Hazmat? Isn't there a, uh, a, for, a film that they would need to f fill out for those specific products? Yeah, so you're going to need your like uh, SDS safety data sheets, and I think there's one other sheet that you would need as well. But in the uh, Send to Amazon workflow, it'll ask you if your, uh, if your products are hazmat, and you kind of just follow those steps, step by step, uh, if it is hazmat, and you know that. And um, yeah, through those steps, it'll bring you to the, uh, to the part where you kind of ask for space in the hazmat um, parts of our fulfillment centers. Perfect. Yep. And then uh, I see a question about how to reduce FBA fees. I'd say uh, the biggest piece that you have control of is the packaging that you're using. So, uh, for example, if you have a lot of extra space in each individual unit, then your storage fees may be higher because it's based off of a square foot or a cubic foot. So if you can find a way to remove that airspace um, or find a lighter packaging, that would be our best recommendation. And then if you can keep your packaging under 18 inches, general, generally it'll be in the uh, standard parcel rather than oversized. So just try and keep that in mind. Yep. Um, and then also you can, uh, if your products are eligible, apply for the FBA small and light. Um, those are generally cheaper products that are obviously smaller and lighter and the fees on those are a little bit less. Yep, I believe for those specific ASINs, it needs to be, uh, you have to have your price point at under $7, and I think you have to be able to sell at least 25 units on average in order to be eligible. I'm sure there are a couple other requirements, so just keep that in mind. Um, let's see, keep going down. 
got quite a few. Um, let's see. Uh, can I think this one's a really important one to hit up on is uh, can we purchase UPC codes outside of GS1? Um, I'd say, I would, you know, and Nick, you can go for it. Yeah, you answer. Yeah, so I always advise against it. There are going to be plenty of other websites that offer, you know, UPC codes. Um, I have specifically spoken with sellers who have bought UPC codes from certain websites that are not gs1.org, and they have had plenty of issues with the UPC codes not being legitimate or they're being like reused and the UPC code is already active as another product. So GS1 is generally going to be the one-stop shop for UPC codes. Um, you know, some sellers will use other websites and it'll work. And if you find one that works, that's great. But to play it on the safe side, I always just recommend gs1.org. Got it. And I think one more question I'm going to ask uh, that we have time for is, uh, can you just, uh, you know, explain who is responsible for uh, uploading the tracking uh, when they're sending in a shipment? Yeah. So uh, kind of like we covered in the in the workflow here. So if you're using a partnered carrier then you do not have to upload the tracking. That's gonna be done automatically through the workflow. And if you're using a non-partnered carrier, you're gonna to have to go back in after you've handed off the shipment and enter in the tracking ID information so we know that the product is on the way and we can also track it as well. Got it, thank you. Cool. Well, I think that is all we have for today. Thank you, everybody, for joining the, uh, you know, the training on sending your first shipments into Amazon. Hope you found some good information here, and uh, please join us for more down the road. We're going to be hosting webinars uh, pretty fr frequently in the future here. All right. Hello, everyone. John here again. A big thank you to uh, Nick and Chris for facilitating and moderating today's webinar. Uh, also, thank you to all who attended and participated. Uh, as mentioned in the beginning, you will be receiving a brief survey, so your feedback and uh, opinion are greatly appreciated. Also, continue visiting uh, Seller University and keep an eye out for future webinars. We hope you enjoyed today's session and we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.